guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Nike Train Ultra Fast Flyknit in the CR7 colorway. Now, of course, this is a training model from Nike, not an actual soccer shoe, but because training is just as important off the field as it is on the field, I figured it was a particularly interesting shoe to feature on the channel, especially considering that this is a CR7 specific colorway, which of course stands for Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, which most of you probably know. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a detailed look at the shoe itself. I've been wearing these for the last week and a half or so, and I've been very, very impressed with this as kind of an off the field training shoe. So we're gonna cover tech specs, we're gonna take a look at the weight of the shoe, as well as how they fit and feel on feet, and essentially cover everything that you need to know about the new ultra fast fly knit trainers from Nike. So if you are interested in learning more, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you are interested in a pair of these for yourself, there'll be a little pop up on screen or you can click the first link down below that'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll be able to pick up a pair of these for yourself. The normal retail price on a regular colorway is $130 US. This CR7 colorway retailed for $200, which is pretty excessive, but it is now marked down to $120. Uh, so again, for around $120, $130, you can get the Ultra Fast in a variety of different colors, including the ones that I'm showing in this video. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, a little pop up on screen, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. Starting off with the number one question that everybody always wants to ask when I review a pair of runners or trainers is, can you actually play soccer on them? Which I guess is an understandable question considering that this is a kind of soccer equipment review channel. Uh, the answer to that question is, is you could if you really wanted to, although again, I wouldn't buy these as dedicated soccer shoes. If you wanted to juggle in them, you can definitely get away with that. My only concern in regards to regularly playing soccer in these would be the midfoot area. Uh, not that it's flimsy, but they did use very thin layers of translucent knitted material in between all of the little flywire elements happening on both sides of the midfoot. You have it there in the tongue as well. That's there obviously to just lighten up the upper as well as allow for a good amount of breathability without sacrificing any kind of uh, I guess structure to the upper because this is a surprisingly structured upper for how thin and flexible it is off of your foot. So that would be one concern in regards to just kicking a ball a lot is anything tearing in between all of these bits, which even if it did tear, technically it wouldn't really hurt the shoe because all the structure is in the thicker areas, which I really wouldn't be too concerned with tearing. Uh, and the other thing in regards to playing soccer in these that isn't really ideal is the fact that it is a mid-cut shoe. Obviously that's not uncommon for soccer shoes, but it's mid-cut in such a way where there is actually some ankle support. So you don't have kind of the freedom in terms of ankle flexibility that you would have in a pair of soccer shoes. It doesn't mean you couldn't kick a ball in these or play soccer in them. It just means it wouldn't necessarily feel like a soccer shoe in any way at all, or at least like a low cut trainer would feel. So stuff to keep in mind if you are planning on picking these up to play soccer in. It's more of a trainer as it is, as opposed to an actual soccer shoe. Again, I know it has the CR7 branding, but again, this is a dedicated training model, not really intended to be used as a soccer product. So with this particular shoe, what I really, really like about them is the fly knit upper. This is for me the best implementation of a fly knit upper uh, on a pair of trainers slash runners that I've personally ever used. And we've seen quite a few different variations from Nike over the years since they introduced fly knit technology. But what's really good about this is just how sock like it is, but at the same time, how structured it is when you pull the laces tight. The laces play a huge role here in terms of locking your foot in place and giving you just an extremely secure sensation from an upper that is fairly minimal and thin as far as just the knitted construction is concerned. So uh, what you have here is kind of a more, I guess, dense fly knit construction in the forefoot area in terms of it not being particularly open. There's a little bit of ventilation through the perforations here uh, above the toes. Uh, but for the most part, this is a little bit more structured. It's a little bit firmer, but it needs to be because this is where you don't have any laces. So you want there to be some structure when you're doing sprints and making those quick cuts change of direction. So for that, 
It does a very good job. It doesn't feel overly soft, but it doesn't feel hard either. It does provide, in my opinion at least, that sock-like sensation that you'd look for from a fly knit upper. Now from the forefoot back, mainly the midfoot area, you can see it's particularly unique in that you do have these translucent areas. If I stick my hand in there, you can see it goes right through. And it's just very, very thin kind of translucent yarn within the fly knit construction itself. And then thicker areas that actually are there to hold the crisscrossing fly wire cables that run from the base of the sole into the lacing system. And this is a very, very clever idea. Uh, when I first saw the pictures of this shoe and prior to trying them on even, I assumed that this was kind of a gimmicky thing. We have seen crisscrossing fly wire cables from Nike before, but this is, like I said, the most effective implementation of fly wire and fly knit on a shoe that I've personally ever felt. When you pull the laces tight with your foot inside the shoe, you immediately notice these fly wire cables really coming together and adding so much structure to the side of the shoe, wrapping your foot pretty much perfectly without feeling uncomfortable and without adding stiffness to the upper. You still feel like you're wearing a pair of socks, but socks that are attached to an outsole and just moves very naturally with your foot. The other thing that I thought was really interesting is that the fact this is a mid-cut shoe uh, and the flywire cables, again, when you pull the laces tight, do such a good job of pushing your heel into the back of the heel area, just giving you perfect lockdown, a very secure sensation, a very stable sensation, and a certain element of ankle structure just because it kind of pinches right here. This is a little bit more structured at the back. So again, you just get this very solid feel in the ankle ankle area, not necessarily ankle support that a brace might provide, but ankle support that honestly I wasn't expecting from a material that's as thin as the upper is on this particular shoe. Um, in, in the back here, there is an internal heel counter for those that are wondering. Nothing too crazy as far as firmness is concerned, uh, but that's not a bad thing. This is pretty much just all extension piece here. But again, because of how the actual fly, fly wire cables work, it does kind of firm up around your ankle, which you'll see a little bit later during the on feet portion of the video. There is a fully independent tongue that also does have that translucent yarn. So again, in regards to ventilation and just keeping your feet nice and cool, there's so much breathability built into this midfoot area of this upper that again very positive feature in regards to I guess general performance and keeping your feet as cool as possible um, the laces are pretty standard it's got a wider flat lace which honestly they're a little bit looser woven in, in, in terms of what I would like but uh, they get the job done no complaints there the top part of the tongue is pretty much just a standard fly knit material which is nice as well Internally, you have a nice synthetic suede material with a small amount of padding. It's all fused very nicely, pretty seamless construction. And again, while there's not much padding back there, the comfort is very, very good. I have worn other mid-cut trainers from Nike before, and there's kind of a firmness and uncomfortable sensation, especially at first in the heel area. You do not get that from this shoe at all. At least I didn't experience any issues in regards to discomfort. The insole, it's fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. Pretty standard as far as insoles go. This being a CR7 colorway does have the CR7 branding right there. It's pretty much just a standard kind of mesh liner, nice and soft. And it's that ortholite foam material, nothing too fancy, but it does get the job done. Moving on to the outsole, you do have a pretty standard kind of firmer foam outsole. Uh, similar to, I guess, what you would expect from a Nike Free, if you will, in that it is more low profile and has some decent flexibility to it. Uh, and as far as underfoot cushioning is concerned, there isn't a lot of it here. This is definitely a firmer cushioning setup. So if you're looking for a lot of impact protection, you're not necessarily gonna get it here. But again, that's not what this shoe is designed for. This is more so for sprinting, quick changes of direction. You want that kind of instant reaction time, not a lot of mushiness under feet, underfoot. So that's kind of exactly what you get here from this setup. And I really like it. You can see that they kind of made this gray foam lip up a little bit over the upper. So you sit kind of in between all of that gray foam, which also adds to the overall kind of stability. Once your foot is in the, in the shoe, it doesn't allow it to slide from side to side, especially when you pull the laces tight. It does have a bit of an outrigger here on the forefoot where you can see it sticks out past the lateral side of the forefoot. And again, that's just there to create a wider base and just better stability in general, which is much appreciated in this style of shoe. And then of course, they incorporated what's basically kind of a stiffener plate. It's what they call uh, a 
kind of propulsion plate, if you will, where it kind of looks like carbon fiber up close. It isn't actually carbon fiber. It's just a piece of plastic that's kind of inserted at the bottom of the outsole. And it does add some stiffness. And the idea is that basically once you kind of flex forward, it's gonna bounce back when you let go. It's gonna give you that kind of positive feedback, uh, uh, a return of energy, I guess is the best way to put it. With that being said, while you do notice the extra stiffness in hand, when the shoe is actually on your foot, it's not something that you notice at all. So I wouldn't really kind of say that that's a major feature in any way at all. And then moving on to the bottom, you can see they went with a completely flat design, again, with stability in mind. And then you have little rubber pods that run uh, kind of in between here in the forefoot and midfoot area, and then more solid rubber around the outside edges in kind of the more high wear, high contact zones. Uh, and traction is okay. Um, it's definitely more of kind of a concrete asphalt type uh, setup in terms of where it's going to provide optimal traction. On an indoor court, a gym floor for example, if it's really, really clean, traction is going to be okay. If it's not the cleanest in the world, traction is not the greatest. Uh, but again, for kind of all-purpose training, doing sprints, changes of direction, uh, you're not really going to have any issues in regards to traction. And there's a decent amount of rubber back there as well, so durability isn't going to be too much of a concern either. So overall, very good trainer, super, super impressed with the performance and the fit and just the general feel of this fly knit upper. In my opinion, this is one of the best implementations of a knitted upper on any shoe that I've ever worn. And overall, just very, very impressed with them. Can't say enough good things. In terms of weight, the Ultra Fast feels pretty light on your feet. Of course, for the sake of the video, I'm gonna weigh them for you today in real time. Keep in mind that this pair is a size 9.5 US. Gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 9.75 ounces, the equivalent of 276 grams. So they are just under the 10 ounce mark, which isn't overly light. Um, again, that's kind of to be expected with a training model. I know a lot of you guys will be comparing the weight of this shoe to an actual high-end soccer cleat. Those are, for the most part, gonna be a lot lighter than this, but I will say that because of how well this shoe fits, because of how comfortable it is in terms of having that knitted upper that is so structured at the same time, the shoe feels a lot lighter on your feet than the scale might indicate. So if you're looking for that lightweight feel from your trainer, you definitely will get it from this particular shoe. Are there lighter trainers out there? Absolutely, but I really don't think that weight should be the determining factor if this is a shoe that interests you for training purposes. All right, so here is a look at the ultra fast trainers on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of neon yellow reflective SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested, be sure to go ahead and check that out. Now in terms of icing's fit and feel on feet, they're very comfortable shoes out of the box. There really isn't anything to break in when you have a fly knit upper. It's so soft, it's so flexible, it really does have that sock-like sensation on your feet. And when you put these on for the first time and pull the laces tight, I think you'll really be surprised at how effective the Flywire cable system is through the midfoot and ankle heel area of the shoe. It does such a good job of locking your foot in place, giving you that good amount of structure and I guess confidence in the stability of the shoe without adding stiffness. The upper never feels stiff, it never feels firm. It just feels like a pair of socks that wraps your foot almost perfectly that just happens to hold it in place really, really well. It's an unusual sensation that again, I'm just a big fan of. The toe box forefoot area, lots and lots of flexibility to it. Again, you do have that propulsion plate on the bottom of your feet. Um, it's incorporated into the outsole. But honestly, when you have the entire weight of your body while standing up and running, you really don't notice it. It's not stiff enough to really make any major impact in regards to actual kind of energy transfer, if you will. So overall, it just has a nice, flexible, kind of low profile feel to it. Um, the actual outsole itself is pretty much completely flat, totally flat bottom, not a lot of kind of lift in the heel area. So it is almost completely flat shoe, which I guess is good for training overall. And again, you get that nice responsive uh, kind of sensation when running in these things, not a lot of underfoot cushioning, but that's kind of what you want from this style of shoe. And also the ankle, you really do get a lot of structure right up to kind of the mid ankle, I guess, is where this is actually cut. And again, it just feels very, very locked in and very structured for being so thin and flexible 
because it is just a fly knit knitted upper. As far as the overall width of the shoe is concerned, these are gonna be suitable for just about anybody. They've got really good width to them. They're not gonna stretch very much, but it's not really a tight fitting shoe until you pull the laces tight. And again, based on the shape of your foot, this is kind of just gonna wrap around it very nicely because of how this upper is so soft and flexible. So these are gonna be suitable for just about anybody as far as width is concerned. And in regards to sizing, I went with my usual size nine and a half US, which is what I wear in most Nike trainers. And the fit and the length is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I personally would recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right guys, that is it for my review of the Nike Ultra Fast Trainers. I very strongly recommend these. And if you are on the market for a pair of training shoes, I would take a good hard look at this particular pair. Of course, if you guys are interested in a pair for yourself, there'll be a link down below in the description or you can click the little eye on screen. That'll take you to the review page on my website and you'll find buy it now links for all the currently available colorways of the ultra fast trainers. If you have any questions at all regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and as always, thanks for watching.